Hey there, I'm Alex Carter. Before I dive into this crazy family drama, hit that like button and subscribe. Trust me, you're going to want to stick around for this wild ride. So, I'm a 25-year-old med student burning the midnight oil to become a doctor. But lately, my focus has been on a different kind of medical mystery, one that hits way too close to home. It all started with my grandpa George. He's this tough old bird, made his fortune in real estate, and he's always been my rock. Every Sunday, I'd head over to his mansion for our standing chess match. Alex, my boy, ready to lose again? He'd laugh, setting up the board. In your dreams, Gramps, I've been practicing. But lately, something's been off. George isn't as sharp as he used to be. His hands shake when he moves the pieces. You okay, Gramps? Just these damn meds, Alex. Don't you worry about me. That's where Aunt Linda comes in. She moved in with George a few months back, claiming she wanted to take care of him in his golden years. Yeah, right. Linda's always got her eye on the prize, George's fat bank account. I've caught her snooping in his study more than once. Just tidying up, Alex. Your grandfather's getting so forgetful these days. My parents, Diane and Robert, they're too trusting. They buy Linda's act hook, line, and sinker. She's family, Alex. We should be grateful she's helping out, Mom always says. Then there's my cousin Mike and Uncle Steve. They're about as useful as a screen door on a submarine. Dude, why are you always stressing? Mike asked me last family dinner. Grandpa's loaded. We're all going to be set for life. I wanted to smack him upside the head. It's not about the money, you idiot. Something's wrong with Gramps. Uncle Steve just laughed it off. George is tough as nails. He'll outlive us all. But I'm not so sure. Every time I visit, George looks worse. He's losing weight. His skin's got this weird yellowish tint. And he's always exhausted. Last week, I stopped by unannounced and overheard Linda on the phone. Just a few more months and it'll all be ours. George won't know what hit him. My blood ran cold. What the hell was she talking about? I tried to talk to George about it, but Linda's always hovering, playing the doting caretaker. Alex, honey, your grandfather needs his rest. Why don't you run along? I'm not buying her act for a second. Something's seriously wrong here, and I'm going to figure it out, even if it means going up against my own family. Because here's the thing. George isn't just my grandfather. He's the only one who ever really got me, who supported my dreams of becoming a doctor. And I'll be damned if I let anyone hurt him, family or not. So yeah, that's where I'm at. Stuck between med school exams and playing amateur detective in my own family. But George is worth it. And if Aunt Linda thinks she can pull a fast one on us, she's got another thing coming. Because this med student? He's about to become a real pain in her ass. I rushed to the hospital as soon as I got the call. George had collapsed during breakfast. When I arrived, Aunt Linda was already there playing the worried caretaker. Oh, Alex, it's terrible. The doctors don't know what's wrong. Something in her voice set off alarm bells. I pushed past her into George's room. He looked awful, skin yellow and clammy. Gramps, what happened? I... I don't know, Alex. One minute I was fine, the next... A doctor pulled me aside. We're running tests, but his symptoms are unusual. That night, I couldn't sleep. George's symptoms didn't match any of his known conditions. Something wasn't adding up. The next day, I swung by George's place. Linda was there, hovering as usual. Alex, your grandfather needs rest. You shouldn't be here. I'm just grabbing some of his things for the hospital. I managed to snag a few samples, hair from his brush, some leftover food... Call it a hunch, but I needed to be sure. Back at the lab, I ran some tests. What I found made my blood run cold. Traces of arsenic. Not enough to kill, but definitely enough to make someone sick. I confronted Uncle Steve at the hospital. Someone's poisoning Gramps, and I think it's Linda. Steve laughed in my face. You've been watching too much TV, kid. Linda's family. Family or not, something's not right. Have you seen how she controls everything? His food? His meds? Steve's face darkened. Watch your mouth, Alex. You're talking about my sister. I stormed off, fuming. Fine, if they wouldn't listen, I'd get proof myself. Over the next week, I played detective. Snuck into George's house when Linda was out, planted some hidden cameras. It was risky, but I had to know. What I saw made me sick. Linda, mixing something into George's food, his drinks, always when no one was around. I took the footage to my parents. They were shocked. 
but still hesitant. Alex, this is a serious accusation. We need to be absolutely sure. I am sure, Mom. Look at the evidence. Dad shook his head. We need more proof. Something concrete. Fine. If that's what it took, I'd get it. I set up a plan. A family dinner at George's place once he was out of the hospital. I'd catch Linda in the act in front of everyone. As I prepared, I couldn't help but think about George. All those chess games, the stories he'd tell about his younger days. The way he'd supported my dream of becoming a doctor when everyone else said it was too hard. You've got the brains and the heart, Alex, he'd always say. Don't let anyone tell you differently. Now it was my turn to have his back. Linda thought she was being clever, but she'd messed with the wrong family. The dinner was set for Saturday. I had one shot at this. If I was wrong, I'd look like a paranoid idiot. But if I was right, well, Linda was about to learn that karma's a bitch. Game on, Aunt Linda. Let's see who outsmarts who. Saturday night. The family's all here, gathered around George's dining table. Linda's playing hostess, all smiles and fake concern. George, darling, I made your favorite soup. Let me serve you. I watched like a hawk as she ladled the soup. My hidden camera was rolling, capturing every move. Linda, you're an angel, Uncle Steve gushed. If he only knew. Dinner dragged on, tension building in my gut. I had to time this perfectly. Anyone for dessert? Linda chirped, heading to the kitchen. Now or never. Actually, I've got something to show everyone first. I pulled out my laptop, queued up the footage. Linda froze in the doorway. What's this about, Alex? Oh, just a little home movie, Aunt Linda. I think you'll find it fascinating. The video played. Linda, clear as day, mixing something into George's food. Gasps around the table. George's face went pale. Linda, what... what is this? Linda's smile cracked. It's... it's not what it looks like. Alex is trying to frame me. I laid out the evidence. The arsenic traces, George's symptoms, everything. You've been slowly poisoning him, haven't you? Trying to speed up your inheritance? Uncle Steve exploded. This is ridiculous. Linda would never... Oh, wouldn't I? The room went dead silent. Linda's eyes were wild, her composure shattered. You don't know what it's like, waiting for years, watching him hoard all that money. I deserve it. I've put up with this family's crap for decades. George's voice was barely a whisper. Linda, how could you? She lunged for the door, but I was quicker, blocked her path. It's over, Linda. Confess. What happened next was chaos. Linda screaming accusations, Mom crying, Dad and Uncle Steve arguing, and George just sitting there looking broken. I called the cops. As they led Linda away, she spat at me. You think you're so smart, don't you, Alex? This family will fall apart without me. You'll see. But I wasn't listening. I was watching George, the strongest man I knew, looking lost and betrayed. I'm sorry, Gramps. I should have figured it out sooner. He gripped my hand, eyes watery. You did good, kid. You did real good. As the night wore on, reality sank in. Our family would never be the same. Trust was shattered, relationships strained. But George was alive, Linda was caught, and me? I'd learned a hard lesson about family, trust, and the length some people will go for money. It wasn't over, not by a long shot. But at least now, we could start to heal. Without Linda's poison, both literal and figurative, in our lives. The weeks after Linda's arrest were a blur. Cops in and out, family meetings that felt more like war zones. George was in the hospital detoxing from the poison. How's he doing? I asked the nurse. Better, but it's a slow process. He's tough, your grandfather. Meanwhile, Linda was out on bail, pending trial. But Karma had other plans. Got a call from Uncle Steve one night. Linda's gone, packed up and disappeared. Great, just what we needed. But two days later, breaking news. Woman identified as Linda Carter involved in severe car accident, currently in critical condition. Guess fleeing justice didn't work out too well for her. At the hospital, George was finally improving. He called a family meeting in his room. I'm changing my will, he announced. Linda's out, obviously, but I'm also setting up a trust. No one gets a dime until they prove they can be responsible with it. Smart move, Gramps. The family was a mess. Mom couldn't stop crying. Dad was angry all the time. Uncle Steve was a wreck, torn between loyalty to his sister and disgust at what she'd done. How could we not have seen it? 
Mom sobbed one night. Because we trusted her, I said. That's what family's supposed to do. George came home a month later. I was there, helping him settle in. Alex, sit down. We need to talk. Oh, boy. I want you to be the executor of my estate. I blinked. Me? But I'm the youngest. I don't know anything about... You're the only one I trust completely. You saved my life, kid. Couldn't argue with that. As for Linda, karma wasn't done with her yet. The accident left her paralyzed. She'd spend years in prison, then a lifetime dependent on others. Poetic justice, if you ask me. Months passed. Slowly, we started to heal. Family dinners were tense at first, but got better. George even started teaching Mike chess, trying to bridge the gap. Me? I threw myself into med school. Seeing George recover, knowing I played a part in saving him, it lit a fire under me. One year later, we had another family gathering, different vibe this time. George, looking healthier than ever, raised a glass. To family, the real kind, the ones who have your back no matter what. I looked around the table. Mom, Dad, Uncle Steve, Mike. We'd been through hell, but we'd come out stronger. Linda was gone, but not forgotten. Her betrayal left scars, sure, but it also taught us a valuable lesson. Blood doesn't always mean loyalty. Real family is about actions, not just DNA. As for me, I learned that sometimes the toughest diagnoses aren't medical. They're personal. But with trust, love, and a little detective work, even the deepest wounds can heal. George caught my eye, winked. Chess later, Doc? I grinned. You're on, old man. Some things never change. And those are the things worth fighting for. That's the end of Alex's intense family drama. Now here's a tough question for you. If you discovered a family member was slowly poisoning a loved one for inheritance money, would you turn them in immediately or try to handle it within the family first? What if turning them in meant potentially tearing your family apart? Drop your thoughts in the comments. This is a heavy one, but that's the point. Let's get a real conversation going about family loyalty versus doing what's right. If this story got you thinking, hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. We've got more complex, real-life dilemmas coming your way. Your support keeps these thought-provoking stories flowing. Stay tuned, and let's keep diving into the gray areas of family dynamics and morality together.